Hello and welcome back to another video. If you're new here, please consider subscribing if you like what you see. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different today. Um, we are going to, we're not going to be working on car as such. Uh, I've decided that we're going to do a little bit of a spraying video. Um, I want to be uh, clear right from the start, I'm not a professional at this at all. Um, I've only, I'm actually only a beginner at this, um, but I, I do want to sort of show what sort of results a beginner can do. Um, in front of me here, I have um, a mini tailgate. This is what I've done my very first um, bit of spraying on. This is my test panel. There is a lot of imperfections in this in terms of um, the actual finish of the bodywork. I'll see if I can find a picture of what this looked like before, but there is quite there was quite a few dents in there. Um, as I say, there is still a lot of imperfections. I was getting impatient because I wanted to I, I was really wanting to use this as a test panel for spraying and not how I can finish my bodywork. That I can do on the car. Um, so yeah, really this was just purely a, a test panel. Um, you know, just to, before I even done any work on the car. So yeah, as I say, this is a, a mini tailgate. Um, it was green. I'm not sure of the colour name of this one. Um, it's actually the, the finish on here at the moment is a um, cellulose direct gloss, um, 17L uh, China blue, um, Vauxhall China blue or Opal China blue. Um, it's inevitable, but we are going to get some trains, and as it happens, we've got this, uh, a couple of planes going over, which are quite good. So we'll ignore those. Um, I actually finished this. I started off with two guns. One uh, spray guns. That is, uh, one's a very cheap gun. The natural pads. Let me go and. So these are the two guns that I actually started spraying with. Um, this one here, this is this is what I started off with as my primer gun. It is a 1.8 ANI. Um, I'm having to look over here for the model number. It is an F1 stroke N stroke X. Um, as I say, you could get this in different like tip sizes. I opted for the 1.8 on this one because um, I thought I'd just use this as my primer gun. We'll have a closer look in these in a minute, but these are not what I'm actually showing off today. This one here is the ANI R160Q. Uh, the reason why I went for this particular gun is because of the low uh, CFM usage that, that it uses, the low air consumption I should say. Um, this one uh, has got a bit of a high consumption, I can't remember the statistics off, off the top of my head. I'll see if I can bring something up on the screen of these two guns. Um, this one was quite a cheap gun, around about £32 I think, if I remember rightly. Um, again, I should bring these up at today's prices on the screen. I bought these a couple of years ago just for sort of reference. Um, this one here was about £110 I think. Um, in terms of professional guns, uh, this is a cheap gun still. Um, however, I found this really, really nice to use. I mean, it's it's better finished than this one. Anyway, this isn't a gun review. Um, what I'm actually looking at doing today is uh, is I've got in actual fact. Let me go and get it. This is the A and I GF3. It's a mini spray gun. Um, most importantly, it's a cheap spray gun. As per usual, we can all the trains. So again, <clears throat> this is a cheap spray gun. I've um, I've not actually used this yet. Um, it's not badly finished. It's not as nice as my R160Q there. Um, I've got this in a 1.2. Now the main reason why I'm doing this video, I'll ask about face and you. We'll see what I'm going to be doing with this panel in a minute. 
is I just really wanted to sort of see what sort of finish I can get using a cheap spray gun. Now, because this is cheap, I had a bit of a problem with this when I first got it, because um, I did have it out of the box, so I checked everything over. Um, is when I first went to screw the uh, pot on, it actually felt like it wouldn't, first of all, it wouldn't take, it would just, just sit, I couldn't get it to like start the thread. Um, in the end, I managed to get it to start and it was quite tight, so as you can see there, I don't think that's fully seated on the seal yet, um, that's actually quite tight there, but once, once I've twisted it a few times, there you see I've got a few more turns on that um, it actually comes good so obviously the threads in here are still uh, a bit unfinished let's say um, as I say I've not actually had this done apart yet um, or done anything with it uh, it's literally kind of out of the box apart from me checking it um, basic controls on this one um, you've got your fan control on the side here again we'll have a closer look at these in the, probably in another video actually um, so that's your fan control so that will switch from your uh, a spot or or a fan um, these I believe produce more of a, an eye pattern um, as you spray obviously if you go down towards more of a, um, a spot it will just do a spot generally people uh, a lot of people use these on on full fan. At the back here, <coughs> excuse me, need another cup of tea I think. Um, at the back here we've got our fluid control, so uh, screw that all the way in. Generally full fluid on a lot of these is um, about three turns out and you can usually tell by how, the, um, trigger, how far the trigger comes back, so if I hold that down and then actually unscrew that a bit more I can't um, there's no movement on here at all in actual fact that was three turns out is actually the maximum that that comes to so I don't know if you can see that here that's as far back as it goes um, now I can't screw that in because I'm actually fighting against myself there I hoping I'm getting this on the screen if I do one turn in you can see that comes back and there's a little bit of a bit more of a gap here I could get my finger in there as well as if I keep that depressed and then go the full turn you can see there's that little bit more movement there and I can't actually get my finger in the same area as I said earlier on this panel is uh, one that I tried uh, you know just to have a go at spraying with the finish is pretty it's not the best to be honest it's my first time we're doing this as I said earlier this is a cellulose based paint um, it's not a bad finish on here again I'll, I'll bring you in for a closer look in a moment um, there is some whoops there's some marks on here and here just just where it's been in storage um, when did I buy this uh, I actually sprayed this in was it the I think it was just after COVID so just after 2000 something like that um, as I say it was really just a training panel to get um, get me uh, sort of you know into spraying really um, but what we're actually going to do with this we're going to sand this down um, using 800 grit paper we're going to um, clean this gun out very briefly with thinners um, and then we're actually going to clear coat this panel um, using a two-pack system. Um, I have got a proper mask as you can see over here. Um, this is the model number of the filters that I went for, it's 9400. I bought this actually from Spray Guns Direct. Um, everything, the spray guns um, and most of my stuff I've actually bought from spray guns direct because well they're probably one of the cheapest that I found online to be fair um, and they provide a really really good service as well um, and also you know that it's going to be genuine stuff rather than 
some knocky stuff off of uh, eBay. Not that all stuff on there is uh, knockoffs. So it's just actually occurred to me that I've not actually said what I'm going to be using this gun for. Um, as I say, this is a very cheap spray gun. Um, as I say, I, I, can't, I think I remember saying that it was around £30 to buy. So I'm just going to take the needle out there. Um, again, I'll go through cleaning these uh, guns in a later video. Um, at the moment, I'm just going to take this one apart because uh, I've never actually had it apart before. It's always a good thing to do while it's uh, still new. You get an idea and make sure that it's all clear inside. This one, annoyingly, is a 10mm spanner uh, to get the actual tip undone. And they usually do this quite tight. Um, one thing to note, always take out the needle before undoing this. Um, I've seen people do it. I've done it myself, admittedly. Um, the idea is, is so any leftover paint you got in the nozzle there doesn't actually start sort of grinding at the tip as you undo it. Not that it matters with this. Yeah, when I say um, it doesn't matter what I, I still haven't said what I'm doing with this. Um, there's something that a chap called Pete's Hobbies um, has done on his channel, on his YouTube channel. I'll, I'll link his channel in the description. He actually converted his spray gun to a, uh, the GF3 spray gun into a primer gun. And all he done is basically drilled out the, the tip from a 1 point, or in this case a 1.2, and I think his was a 1.2 as well, funny enough, um, into a 1.7. Now I've bought some cheap 1.7 drill bits, although that's, that's what he actually advised against doing. And of course I'll go and do the same thing because I'm a tight ass. Um, what I'm wanting to do with this is actually convert it into a What I want to do is, is convert this into a uh, primer gun. And the reason why I wanted a, a mini primer gun, there's probably guns out there on the market that you can easily do this with. Um, again, I'm cheap, right? So, um, it's actually for doing alloy wheels. I found that using the big bulky gun, um, the F1NS, is very it's difficult to get into the barrel part of the gun you know you, you've really got to watch where you're going with it because I mean look at the size difference of these things you can see with the big um, paint cup on there um, you can easily get uh, you know start hitting the sides on bits you've done uh, which is not necessarily what you want in a primer so you land up doing the bottom bits which you probably would do anyway spraying normally but um, you know you want to kind of make it as even as you possibly can so you you do your bottom bits first and then come up and uh, knock the bits that you've just done so that's where this little guy comes in it's a nice size to actually do that in 800 grit paper this is only cheap stuff that I bought off of Amazon
Now, how I'm sanding this, by the way, is I'm trying to use the flat part of my palm as best I can, rather than putting pressure on the actual fingers. Um, I don't have any proper rubbing blocks. That's something that I'm wanting to kind of get one day. As I say, all I'm trying to do with this is not really make the panel any better. I want to just try the clear coat in that gun um, and see what sort of finish we could get from it. So as much as I love filming in the sunlight, um, it was actually causing havoc with the uh, with the camera. Now that we're coming into the autumn, or well within the autumn, I should say. So I'm giving that a quick rub down now. I'm going to give it a bit of a clean over. So I'm going to try and clean these bits off with some probably fairy liquid and uh, uh, some water. Okay, so this is what I use to connect up to my um, air supply. Um, I've got the standard uh, PCL air fitting here. You can use whatever you're using. This is the Sealy um, water trap, and then attached to that, this is the ANI sort of uh, air regulator um, kit. Um, I should put a link, all these again in the description. Um, I think all of these, apart from the PCL fitting, I actually got off of Spray Guns Direct. <clears throat> uh, this regulator here isn't so much a regulator, it's more of an airflow control valve. Um, usually these fittings on the ends here, uh, so far for me, have been universal, so I've been able to use it. Maybe it's because I buy away and I stuff. And I only put that on hand tight. Now, some guns have an actual airflow on them, like my um, Q R one sixty Q rather. Um, I usually just use this and use it on the maximum flow rate. So I've just put some gun wash thinners into into the uh, into the gun here. But I've got no air supply connected to it still. Just like to run through those thinners through your gun. I do that as habit. This is a brand new gun. Um, by rights there shouldn't be anything in there, but just in case there is some oils or anything that they previously used to make this gun. Um, I also run it through guns that I've even previously cleaned. Just, uh, just gives you that little bit of extra reassurance. Okay, so I'm going to move on to actually mixing up my clear now. Um, this is a two pack um, or 2K clear. Uh, it's a U pole 2082, as you can see written there. Um, you really need to use a proper mask for this because uh, it has got hardener in it. If you get that in your lungs, um, obviously that can set. Hard in your lungs. 
so that's not good um, you can see I'm wearing gloves all throughout this uh, this here um, it's something I like to do and I advise you guys to do it as well so I've got a simple mixing cup here um, guys look at your TDS the technical data sheets uh, for uh, my case UPOL 2082 um, TDS put that into your Google search and you will get a, a PDF document that you can download read through it it's um, it's actually made for guys like me that doesn't like reading stuff it's really easy to follow uh, it tells you how to mix it what hardener to use um, this is a 2030 I think um, so there are different types of hardener there's uh, some uh, fast extra fast medium I think there's even a slow and it tells you what sort of temperature ranges to use these in um, this is the only hardener I've got it's about 16 degrees today um, but we're just gonna go for it because I'd like I'm, I'm intrigued to see what this GF3 can actually do so anyway um, and again it tells you what sort of ratios to use so I've got a mixing cup here um, usually if you buy these as a kit if you get um, five liters of actual clear coat and two and a half liters of hardener that kind of tells you that it's probably a two to one again the TDS will tell you so we're going to use the two to one on here I'm going to use about 75 mil of um, paint here for that it, if it's not enough if it's not enough it doesn't matter we'll just make up some more right so um, I should really explain how to use these so uh, let me just make sure I've got you in shot there uh, because of the sunlight it's really really clear of, uh, of what I'm trying to explain here so let's try this I don't know if you can quite see that down there all right so there's your two to one this is really professional camera work here so there's our two to one so um, what you do is you fill up your first of all your um, actual paint there and you fill that up to um, either the number one or the number two is the first step you can see there and then with the actual hardener um, you fill that up if you filled it up to the number two mark you then go up to this number two mark here um, and then obviously you've got the other markings so if you wanted even more paint so you fill uh, where's my finger gone there it is you fill it up to the three with the actual paint and then again the hardener to the number three there so if you wanted to finish off with about 200 millilitres of paint which is just there you fill up to the oops, to that number four there with your actual paint fill it up the rest of the way with your hardener and then you can add your 5 10 15 20 percent of um, thinners there I hope I've made that clear um, probably not whoops right So let's get this mixed up. Of course, I'm doing this on a really windy day. So that's perfect. So as you can see there, I've gone up to roughly that number two mark which is impossible to get on camera and get straight at the same time actually let's try this fingers are in the way there's my two to one and 
and you can just about see that my number two, I'm up to the number two line. And now I'm going to come up to this number two line here with Hardener. Mix those two together. Now I'm using a 190 mesh um, paint filter here, so this is going to be really easy to do with just two hands. Can you tell I'm an amateur yet? Okay, that's the guns. So because the paint's potentially going to be incompatible with the uh, cellulose here, uh, the thinners in this could react with the paint. Um, the first um, layer that I'm going to spray is going to be what they call a tack coat um, which means it's going to be fairly dry going on so I've set the gun for one turn out um, full fan um, which on here is about three turns I believe um, and I'll be spraying at two bar pressure So we'll leave that to uh, flash off for about 10 minutes before we spray our next full wet coat. Okay, so that's uh, over 10 minutes that's passed. Let's spray the next coat.
that's the full cup used up now we're going to let it set this is after I sprayed you can see the clear is just starting to flow out We'll come back in a few minutes and uh, and see what it looks like. So I've moved the mini boot lid into the sun now just to let it um, harden off and uh, also allow the clear to flow out a little bit. Although the 2082 doesn't really flow out all that well from what other people have told me. Um, there are some imperfections in this, it hasn't, um, there are bits that I've gone, not gone over quite as much as I should have done, but there you go, that's, uh, a professional painter would do much better than that. So, um, a little bit about the gun, so now that I've used it a couple of times and unscrewed the pot a couple of times, it now screws in really nice, it's just, uh, so yeah, just a bit of a, a little initial sort of issues with it, I suppose. Not really issues, um, just I suppose whatever was in there. For a, a 30 pound spray gun, that performed quite well, really. Um, I, I, I feel the fan could have been a bit bigger, but at the end of the day, this is a spot repair gun and not an actual full panel spray gun. Um, gives, I, I think it's done quite a good finish there really for, for something that's quite cheap so you know which is good for you know if you're um, getting into this and you want something to play with something like this would be ideal for you and even the bit at the beginning where I had the, the paint pot didn't screw in all that well is now absolutely fine um, so yeah uh, as I say I'm gonna drill the nozzle out to 1.7 um, and use this as a primer gun so that would be interesting to see what that turns out like would I use it again for spraying clear uh, probably not because I've got the um, R160Q which I think is a little bit of a better gun gives a bit of a better or wider spray pattern than this one does but I mean that's what you're paying the extra money for if I only had this gun to choose from then yeah I would use it so you know I mean this is turning it into a review it's not a review at all um, I just wanted to prove that you can spray clear which is one of the harder um, paints to to spray right um, I wanted to show a beginner doing it um, that doesn't necessarily know what they're doing uh, to, to show that you can get a reasonable result so um, yeah so I, I do some passes now on using another camera and uh, I'll show you where I've gone a, a bit light especially at the front here I could have gone a bit heavier it's actually flowed out quite nicely really um, so yeah uh, thank you very much for watching um, hope that you will come again soon and um, I'll see you in the next one